as a tool. Warner Brothers, one of the Hollywood's when top studios, is adding its voice to others opposing the incursion into by halting the release of all of its films in Russia. Last week, at the New York premiere of The Batman, the cast shared mixed feelings about the decision. It's, it's an impossible situation in so many ways, and, so, and an um, unbelievable tragedy. Personally, I think art transcends, and I think it's important for stories are such a healing force. Um, that I think it's important that all people should be able to watch stories. I'm a freak. But Disney and Sony both agree that Warner Brothers has made the right decision. And now, major productions including Turning Red and Morbius will also not be shown in Russia. Streaming service Netflix has also lent its cloud to the growing voices of dissent by suspending its service in Russia. It has also halted all future projects and acquisitions in the country. This Cannes International Film Festival has also announced that it will not accept any Russian delegations this year. And it's not only just the movie industry that is responding to the Russian attack. London's Royal Opera House has cancelled the upcoming tour of the famous Bolshoi Ballet. And the legendary New York Metropolitan Opera has announced that it will no longer work with Russian artists or organizations which support President Vladimir Putin until the attacks on Ukraine are over. The Munich Philharmonic has parted ways with its chief conductor Valery Gargiev for his ties to Vladimir Putin. Russia will also not be represented at this year's Eurovision contest. Artists from Nick Cave to Iggy Pop are cancelling their shows in Russia. Another major event that Russia will no longer be able to take part in is the Venice Biennale. The Russian pavilion won't take place as planned at this year's international event. But this time it was the decision of Russian artists and a Lithuanian curator. They pulled themselves out of the event, saying that there is no place for art when civilians are dying under the fire of missiles. Let's talk to Stephen Hutchings, a professor of Russian studies at the University of Manchester. Hi there. Good to have you with us today. So let's start with this. Do you support a cultural boycott of Russia? I don't support a blanket boy cultural boycott of Russia. Um, I think one has to be careful to make distinctions uh, between state institutions um, that are sponsored by and are provoking, promoting the line uh, of the Kremlin from non-state uh, institutions, which may be under pressure to um, fall into line, uh, but um, are, are not sanction sanctioning the, the Russian view of, of, of the war, and from individuals, um, many of whom um, have spoken out quite um, vociferously against the war. So Ivan Urgant, who is a very well-known um, presenter and comedian on, on Russian television, has been outspoken. Uh, there's a long list of Russian writers, including Lyudmila Ulitskaya, who's perhaps the best-known writer in Russia today, all of whom have expressed um, grave reservations um, uh, about what is happening. So I think a blanket cultural yeah. boycott is, is, is wrong. OK, so let's go back to your first point. Do you mean that if... Um an activity or an institution is supported by the Russian state, we should be boycotting them. Um, yes, or, or an institution that is being used uh, as a tool of the Russian state. Um, so one has to make a distinction between something like um, the Royal, the, the um, Bolshoi Ballet, which is supported by the Russian state, but may not necessarily be um, used as a tool to promote its its war narrative from um, um, from um, state television um, or, or from certain kind of sporting activities. Um, we witnessed the, um, uh, the, the the rather shocking demonstration of um, of support for the Russian war effort by a an athlete at the um, at the um, uh, Winter Olympics recently. Um, so I'm making a distinction between 
uh, institutions that are not only directly supported and funded by the state, but are being openly and directly used as a, as a, as a tool in the information war from institutions that may have state support. Cinema, for example, receives a great amount of state support, but individual directors, including some quite surprising ones, have um, spoken out or, mm -hmm. or expressed observations. And then individuals, it, it's a completely different matter. So this okay. blanket boycott okay. of all culture, Russian cultural activity is mistaken and counterproductive in my view. Okay, let's, uh, let's expand on that. Mistaken and counterproductive. In what ways could it be injurious to cultural life boycotting the wrong people, in your words, in the wrong ways? Well, first of all, I think those who are brave enough to have um, uh, spoken out in what is a very, very repressive environment require our support uh, and our endorsement rather than an attempt to kind of isolate them. And, and they may misread a blanket cultural boycott as, as, as a lack of support and and. Moreover, perhaps even more importantly, a, a blanket cultural boycott that isn't fine-tuned and calibrated in the way I'm suggesting could very easily play into the Russian state narrative of Russophobia. Uh, so that is that is a, 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 a plays a very prominent part in 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 the Russian state effort to um, to counter our, our our own account of the war. You mean, sorry um, to cut you off there. You mean like demonizing Russia in a way that could be racist, really? Yes, yes, that that what the West is about is a demonization of everything Russian, Russian culture, Russian people, Russian language. Um, and if we're not careful, we can give uh, ammunition to the Russian state to 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 to, to foster that narrative, um, and 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 so therefore, I think we have to be very very careful about um, uh, about boycotts. Moreover, a further dimension to this is that the Russian state is is very very quick to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we want to do is engage with ordinary Russian people and talk to them and 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 and, and keep them, you know, in contact with us. Um, and if at the same time as we are boycotting uh, Russian cultural institutions, the Russian state is taking reciprocal reciprocal action against the BBC, against yeah. the British Council, uh, and, and other such um, vital tools of communication with ordinary Russian people, then then we could be sabotaging our own um, our own agenda. All right, we don't have much time left. So as for one last question, how likely do you think uh, this cultural boycott is to prove fruitful, especially in light of past experiences in Israel and South Africa? Do you think they uh, they are uh, achieving anything or they achieved anything? And in that sense, what can the world uh, do for Russia? I think uh, each case is different. I think in the case of South Africa, um, such was the unanimity and the isolation of South Africa that arguably the cultural boycott did play a small role in bringing about the change that was so desperately required. In, in the case of Israel, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that is the case. And I'm not sure that, you know, we have a situation similar to that in Russia, where um, the Israeli state has used the uh, attempt to isolate it uh, to reinforce its own sort of um, sense of, de of, of, of victimhood. Um, and and Russia, the Ru Russian state propaganda is very, very good at, at, at emphasizing this, this notion of Russia as a mm -hmm. victim. Um, and, and I think the parallel between Israel and Russia is much stronger than that okay. between uh, South Africa and Russia. Very interesting points. Unfortunately, we have to wrap it up here. Stephen Hutchings, very good to have you with us today. Thank you.